You're listening to the Be a Better Lawyer podcast with Dina Cataldo, episode 144. So how do high achieving lawyers break through generations of being taught that we have to grind ourselves into the ground to get results for clients, build a successful business and create a life we love? While law schools are busy teaching the rule of law, they're slacking on teaching us how to be a better human to create for ourselves the success we thought we'd achieve after law school. This podcast bridges the gap between law school and life. Hello there. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing well wherever you are today. I have been really fortunate here in California. Sacramento has had some unseasonably warm weather, but it lets me take Frankie on more walks. And he's all about walks. He is so happy. Um, I've been posting some of our little adventures on Instagram, and you can see him there at Dina.Cataldo. And I have some highlights with him and all of his cuteness. Beware if you go there. There's some censored pictures there. He gets very comfortable around me. Anyway, (laughs) maybe that's too much information. But one of the, the other things that I've been talking about on Instagram is Thursday's Mindset Micro Training on how to focus for lawyers. If you're listening to this podcast, first thing when it comes out, you can still get in on this. Go to dinacataldo.com forward slash 144 to sign up for this focus training. I am super excited to introduce a new way of understanding the materials I cover and introduce you to some of the more advanced concepts that I work with my clients on when we coach together. This is also very relevant to what we are talking about here today. So if you're listening to this on Thursday morning, February 25th of 2021, come sign up. We start at 5 p.m. Pacific time. So go to dinacataldo.com forward slash 144 to sign up. All right, so let's talk about some cognitive dissonance here. So if you have tried thought work, maybe you've been following along with this podcast, you have some idea of what cognitive dissonance is, but you are noticing that it's hard to believe the new thought that you want. It's because you're having cognitive dissonance. It's uncomfortable. Honestly, it feels like your brain is going to explode. It may even feel scary. And that's a good thing. That means you're on the right track towards the change you want to make. The first thing to know is that cognitive dissonance is not a problem. It's a natural consequence of trying to change ourselves. So quick example, and if you've been watching my Instagram stories, you'll already know this about me. I just started Invisalign. It's about a year process of moving my teeth from their current position to a new straighter position. It's uncomfortable. I'm trying to change my body using an external framework to reshape the configuration of my teeth. So of course it's gonna be uncomfortable, right? I have my eyes set on the purpose of getting my teeth straighter though, so I can work through that cognitive dissonance, that uncomfortable feeling. My eyes are on having healthier teeth. I get to keep nice teeth when I'm older. So every time I feel discomfort or I don't want to put my trays back in, I remember, okay, discomfort is part of the process. I have my eyes set on what I want. This is the same thing as when we have a goal, whether it's in our practice to grow our practice, to start a new business, to do anything that we've never done before, we know there's going to be discomfort. But to achieve the goal, we keep the vision, even when we want to stop everything and going back to being our old uncomfortable or old comfortable selves, you know, the one that just wants to watch TV and do all the things we've always done. Depending on where we are, we're going to feel some level of cognitive dissonance anytime we do something that's outside of our current identity. And each of us has an identity. That identity is made up of thoughts about ourselves, who we are, what we believe to be true in the world. And this is what I work with my clients on, is really understanding the thoughts that they currently have about where they are, because most of us don't see them, right? We're not looking for them. And understanding what thoughts are preventing them from becoming the person that they want to become, the person who already has the goal in their hot little hand. So 
All our brain is doing when we feel cognitive dissonance is it's telling us, our brain is telling us that it doesn't believe a thought yet, a thought that that future version of ourselves would already have. And that's keeping us from having what we want. For example, a smoker deeply identifies with being a smoker. I've used this example before, right? They have thoughts that they're a smoker. They like smoking, or maybe they have thoughts that it's too hard to quit offer them a cigarette and they say yes without thinking because that's just what they do. Offer a cigarette to a non-smoker and they say no. They probably say no with a little bit of disgust even because they have thoughts about themselves that they deeply identify as a non-smoker. They probably think it's gross or at the very least they don't think about it because they don't smoke. Ask a smoker to stop smoking or ask a non-smoker to smoke and they will experience cognitive dissonance. It's like their brain would not be able to compute what you're asking it to do. Immediately, the brain would get to work confirming its identity by producing more thoughts around who they are to keep them where they are and prevent any kind of change. And this is why it can be so difficult for us to do this work on our own because we don't see what's happening. We don't see what's going on in our brain. And that's why coaching is so effective. That's why I love it when I get coached because I will begin to see all of the thoughts that I'm not recognizing and understanding, okay, that's where my work is. So remember, our brain thinks that change is dangerous. What we've been doing so far has kept us alive. Everything that we've done, all our habits, all our thoughts, everything we do every single day, it has kept us alive. If we change, our primal brain thinks we could die. Literally, our brain thinks we could die. So us humans have a tendency to believe that change should be easy, but our brain wants to make it hard. This is just a thought, right? Us humans have a tendency to believe that change should be easy. Thinking that it should be easy is just a thought. Change takes focus and it takes a willingness to redirect that focus over and over again to achieve the desired result. And one of the tools to overcome this cognitive dissonance is what one of my coaches calls a bridge thought. I love this tool and I use it with my clients all the time. So imagine you have a goal to stop over drinking wine. You love wine but you know it's not helping you achieve the goals you have in your practice. It's eating into your time and it doesn't make you feel good. Maybe you can't get the sleep that you want or you just feel unfocused in the morning. We can't logic our way to changing our habits. Mathematically, right, it makes sense. Less wine at night or no wine at night means better sleep, means more energy to focus the next day, right? One plus one is two. But our brains... When it's creating changes like this, does not work like that. Our brain thinks, I love wine, I deserve it, it's not fair that I shouldn't be able to have wine, I want it, I don't know who I am without wine, my friends will judge me if I, if I don't have wine, I'll feel uncomfortable unless I have a glass of wine in my hand. Our brain builds a fortress of thoughts. It's pulled up the drawbridge and it said, this is who I am, back off. (laughs) I am in a fortress here. This is who I am. Now imagine a different version of you, the one that can have one glass of wine without overdoing it, or the one who decides they don't want wine anymore. That's where I went with it. That's what I decided to do when I stopped drinking. Your thoughts are that your goals are more important than a glass of wine. You, and this new version of you, would rather sleep well than drink a glass. It doesn't matter what your friends think because they're still your friends. And if they're not being friendly, (laughs) you'll make new ones. It's not a problem. If you are a drinker and you're identifying with being someone who drinks wine, you are asking yourself to jump over the moat and onto the fortress way over on the other side of the moat where that new you that you can envision is. It's scary. That's a huge leap. Your brain thinks, right? Your brain thinks, no, no way. I can't do that. I'm definitely going to die. That sounds way too hard. 
And this would be true no matter what goal you have. It doesn't matter, you know, what goal you're deciding to do, whether it's attracting more clients, attracting better paying clients, building a business on top of your current law practice, whatever it is that you want to do that you haven't done before that you can't identify with. It is going to be like jumping from your fortress where you are across a huge moat onto a brand new fortress. Your brain creates a fortress using the thoughts it has right now about who you are and what you're capable of, pulls up the drawbridge, then believes what you want is far, far, far away on the other side of a moat. At least that's what your brain is thinking. So this is where the bridge thought comes in. Back to the over drinking example, right? So if you love wine and want to release your desire for it, you might have a thought like, I don't know how to not want my Zen every night. One of the tools we've talked about before is creating a vision of your future self who already has what you want. So that way you can imagine what they would think. Your future you would no longer desire wine, doesn't think these thoughts, That future version in the fortress across the moat thinks, I don't even want wine. Going from I don't know how to not want it to I don't even think about it likely sounds impossible to you if you identify as a drinker. Your brain wants to shut down because it doesn't even compute that that could even be possible. It's not a possibility for it. A bridge thought helps you slowly build a bridge between your current fortress and that awesome fortress you've been eyeing across the moat. A bridge thought might be something like, I want to not want wine. That thought won't freak your brain out as much as I don't even want it. Your brain freaks out because it doesn't believe the thought, I don't even want it. The trick to bridge thoughts is finding one that you believe, then continually working your way to the ultimate thought you want to have, building towards the one, building towards it one thought at a time. And you can use this kind of a bridge thought for any goal you want to achieve. Now, if you think it's impossible to do anything, get your time under control, stop feeling overwhelmed, build your business, really just start looking at where you are right now and what you believe, and then look into that future version of yourself that you want to grow into. Ask yourself what they would be thinking. Then ask yourself what would be easy to believe right now. Maybe it's a thought like, I want to believe that I can make more time. Or maybe it's a thought like, I can find a way to build my business. Or maybe I see others doing it. Maybe it's possible I could too. Bridge thoughts are a great tool to help you move into the future version of yourself. The trick is not staying in that bridge thought too long. And it's really tough to tell. Like, are you getting too comfortable just thinking that maybe it's possible thought and not taking action? And one way to know that you've been there too long is when you're not making any progress towards your goal or it feels really hard, like you're rolling a boulder up a hill. That's what I help my clients with. Don't ignore the call to do and be more in your life. Learn to live into the bigger version, that bigger vision you have for yourself. I can help you clarify that vision and make it happen. Come coach with me. You can book a strategy session to get started at dinacataldo.com. I hope you have a lovely week and I will talk to you soon. Bye.